last shelf before we go back into the office and the shelves that you're more accustomed to seeing. This is pretty much middle grade. A lot of it is fantasy, but it's pretty, I think it's all middle grade here on this shelf as well as some random pictures and knickknacks. So up top there, that's a wooden bear. I actually don't know where that came from, but there's a wooden bear. And then I have The Inheritance Cycle. That's the Aragon books there by Christopher Paolini. Um, my Hunger Games books. I, huh. I don't know where the original Hunger Games is because that's just Catching Fire and Mockingjay. I don't know. The girl who circumnate, the, ugh, I can't say it. The girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making and the sequel by Catherine Ann Valente is there. I haven't read those yet. And this is the beautiful Pages of Co by Anna James, Tilly and the Book Wanderers. Um, it's a picture of my husband. He's a boot here. This is right after his boot camp graduation at Camp Pendleton. And then this is a really awesome samurai made out of a whiskey bottle <laughs> that just happens to be sitting there. Uh, then we have the Harry Potter shelf. So we have. Uh, Fantastic Beasts, this is a Japanese, I believe, version of one of the Harry Potters. Uh, Cursed Child, the special edition um, of book seven, and then like these are all the original paperbacks that I read. I read books one through five in paperback, six was in hardback, and then I had to wait for seven when I read those, and then I have the old um, library books. And then I have some other foreign language editions. I really like this cover. That's the German cover. That one's super cool. And then here's a wedding picture of us. We are 19 years old. Sam was actually two weeks shy of being 19. And randomly, here's a koala bear. I don't know where that came from, but he's hugging the bookshelf. So don't you want to hug a bookshelf? Uh, down here we have some kind of random, um, I actually don't know where this came from. <laughs> this is kind of some random, uh, just middle grade literature stuff that I've collected along the way. Uh, I got my rolled dolls here. I love Kate DiCamillo, wrote Tales of Despero, The Magician's Elephant, Phantom Tollbooth, of course, that's a classic. I actually read this in fifth grade with, like, at school. I had no memory of reading this, and I picked this up, um... I might have picked it up in an airport. I remember reading it in an airport, um, in any case. Bridge to Terabithia was one of my favorite books as a kid. I had a difficult entry into reading, and um, I had to be, like, in a remedial reading class in, like, first and second grade, and this was one book that I read over and over again. Um, and so that one's kind of special to me. I had... There's a bookmark in it. I was reading this aloud to my niece and nephew one night when they were spending the night and we got about halfway through. Um, I have one through five of Holly Black's The Spider Book Chronicles, Wildwood. Um, I think I, there was like a sale. I got this on Book Depository or Thrift Books. And um, I've seen a lot of people have liked it and it's a beautiful cover. So I wanted to get that. Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. Love that book. I read that right around Christmas time. And then we have uh, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials. And I just recently read, I think at the end of December 2018, I read The Golden Compass. And then we have more, uh, more nonfiction. So everybody needs the Ruth Bader Ginsburg workout, right? I basically picked this up because it was hilarious and I couldn't not get it. Um, go girl. Um, then we have this stuff down here is mostly health and wellness related, and there might be some businessy kind of stuff here, here. So this is probably the best title to any book you will ever book you will ever find: "Becoming a Supple Leopard: The Ultimate Guide to Resolving Pain, Preventing Injury, and Optimizing Athletic Performance" by Dr. Kelly Starrett. Um, <laughs> it's a great resource um, for just how to keep your body uh, moving and feeling good. Speaking of which, Primal Blueprint, um, I recently became certified as a Primal Health Coach, and so this is kind of the, the, uh, the ultimate book to go all in with the Primal Paleo lifestyle and basically living, um, living a lifestyle that, that sets up our body 
living a lifestyle that sets up our body to um, function optimally. So there's another, there's some more, um, there's some more health related books here. Um, if you're young and looking into it, to investing, this is actually a really good, I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. Um, it's kind of tailored to um, people who are in their 20s, early 30s, and um, it's just kind of a no BS, to the point, but entertaining book on um, finances, um, what you should be spending, how you should be saving, how to invest, that kind of thing. So I actually really highly recommend this as far as a financial tool for uh, particularly those who are young like still. Book kind of thing. Some of them are paleo specific, keto specific. Um, and then this over here is a stack of, this is a specific recipe for a delicious pork loin. Um, but then I do the sun basket uh, meal boxes sometimes. And so this is just a st huge stack of the, like the recipe books that they come with so you can cook the food that, uh, that they sent you for that day. And then this is r totally random. This is mostly, these are like Sam's random weapons. There's like this crazy hunting knife thing that, I mean, it's not sharp at all. I think this one right here is his actual K-bar that he actually carried with him, um, uh, you know, in war. There's a compass on there and everything. And then uh, everybody needs an Evil Dead lunchbox. So there we go. My nephew carries around his crayons in there. So that's fun. And then I got a couple, couple puzzles right there. And then just some of those Ikea boxes with like just totally random things in there. And then of course, every house needs a didgeridoo. So Sam got that when he was in uh, Australia, New Zealand. Um, he got that as well. The question is, do I know how to play it? No, I don't. So that was the three bookshelves that are not in my office. These are the ones that are in my family room and living room. So now we're going to head on into my office and these are going to be the more familiar bookshelves to you. So these bookshelves in here might look familiar to you. Um, sometimes there's a random and a reason for these. Some of them are classified more by uh, certain editions. Some of them are, a good amount of them are done alphabetically. And then I have my Great American Read section completely separate. And then I have a couple other kind of genre uh, specific areas. Right, so starting way up top, we have Scooby-Doo. That's my husband's. We have another copy of the illustrated Prisoner of Azkaban, 100 Nights of Hero, Book 7 of Harry Potter, and this cat uh, birdhouse thingy that my great-grandma got for me. Then I don't know what to do with it, so it's there. Um, all right, then we have the vintage Russian classics. These are all amazingly designed. Uh, let's see, let's pull out. One right here, this is the Master and Margarita. So they all have these amazing individual covers and then they have French flaps as well. That's awkward to do one handed. I'm gonna not put that back up there. Um, next, uh, my half price books sell these are tourist uh, classics. They're usually like $4.99. Um, and so I've got some, uh, I got the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes there. Um, Rudyard Kipling's The Man Who Would Be King and other stories. Um, so this is like English colonialism in, uh, in India. So I read the first few short stories of this um, in October for Victober. So maybe I'll probably save the rest of it for Victober again next year. Uh, then we have some vintage red spines there. I've got a Farewell to Arms. A um, couple from Kurt Vonnegut's and Umberta Echoes, The Name of the Rose. And this is another beautiful cover here. The Penguin Modern Classics here. I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason for what gets a blue spine and what gets a white spine. But um, we have some uh, uh, Shirley Jackson there, James Joyce, James Baldwin, Truman Capote, Angela Carter, Virginia Woolf, Franz Kafka and Jack Kerouac, and then we have The Chrysalids by John Wyndham, and then a couple of uh, Muriel Spark books there, and then I have these 
um, what are these called? These are the Everyday Library. The Oh, these ones are the Barnes & Noble Collector's Library edition. So I keep finding these ones at my, uh, at my local half price books. And then next up, we just have like general fiction that is alphabetized. So I have a little cup here with, these are mostly book depository bookmarks. Those are everywhere. Uh, I just like the cover of the Traveling Cat Chronicles, so that's kind of sitting out. But then otherwise, we start with Kate Atkinson and uh, move through here over to the uh, uh, the Daphne du Maurier's begin. And then there's the rest of the Daphne du Maurier's there. And then we have my Ken Follett's. Um, those are all the Follett's that I've read. We have Marilla of Green Gables by Sarah McCoy. This is just the dust jacket. My sister has the actual book right now. And then uh, one of my favorite books of last year was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. That was a great one. And then also Eleanor Oliphant. So I actually read this edition, which is the UK edition. And then around Christmas time, I like to pick up extra books um, just in case there's somebody that... Um, I forgot that I needed to buy for, and so Eleanor Oliphant was one of those books that I figured I could give to basically anyone, and anyone will enjoy. And so that's what that this extra copy um, of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. It is about who's hiding behind here? Oh, that's John Irving. Until I find you. And next down here, we're in the eyes. It's one of my favorites of last year, The Snow Child by A. Wen Ivy, and then I have her her other book, The Bright to the Bright Edge of the World. This one's kind of interesting. So this is Rifles for Wadi or Wadi by Harold Keith. So this is a really old edition. This came off of my great grandma's shelf. She is uh, about a month shy of being 97. Um, apparently, I don't know if this is a library book that she never returned, but this is from the Citrus Heights Library, Grandma, Sacramento County Library. Do honor before November 10th, 1977. So this is a little bit overdue. But this is about the Trail of Tears of um, the uh, Native Americans being pushed out of Florida and given land um, in, uh, I think, Oklahoma and Arkansas. So this was copyright 1957. So my grandma is, my great grandma is from Oklahoma. And so she very much um, loved this book. And uh, I asked if I could have it because she's not going to read it again. So um, I would like to get to that soon. It's kind of a piece of piece of our family history, I guess. Um, so that so more more books kind of in alphabetical order here. Um, Chuck Palahniuk, uh, several years ago, probably fifteen years ago now, I was in a, a big Chuck Palahniuk kick. And then the last books here on this alphabetical shelf, we got Normal People by Sally Rooney there. Recently picked up The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Satterfield. She has uh, a new book out. Um, and, oh, one of my favorites I read recently is The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay. Uh, that was an excellent, excellent book. Um, and, yeah, so this takes us all the way over to Why with Richard Yates's Revolutionary Road. All right, I have this kind of skinny uh, shelf. These are all, by the way, the Billy bookcases from ikea um most of them are in white you saw the two that are black so this very top shelf are kind of classics that are in various kind of random editions i have a lot of the penguin uh like deluxe editions there um little women and joe's boys right here so i think i'm missing little men because i think joe's boys comes after little men um and i haven't i've only read little women but i found these editions at um, a local bookstore of mine, a used bookstore of mine recently, and I think they're illustrated. If I'm not, yeah. So it's like black and white illustrations. So I can find another one. Oh, here we go. Here we have a little color plate there of the girls. This is, oh, this is amazing. So this picture, there's gonna be glare like crazy. See, I need to fix that a little bit. It's hard to see. This is glass. So my friend Suzanne had me, asked me for a picture from our trip to Ireland. We did like this running adventure trip. And um, I sent her a picture and I thought she was, it was to show someone and she got this printed for me. It's on glass. Um, get a better angle a little bit there. 
um, yeah, it's all in glass and um, I haven't figured out where to hang it yet. So right now I'm just enjoying it here. Um, behind that <clears throat> is a bunch of like old classic stuff. There's um, Sophocles and Shakespeare and there's a Peter Pan there. Um, and then I have this big copy of uh, Lonesome Dove. I accidentally bought two copy copies of Lonesome, D Lonesome Dove recently. Um, these are fantasy that I've read. So we have the Poppy War. Um, well, that's not completely true because, uh, yeah, I haven't read, I haven't read Clash of Kings. I started that one right before I went back to college. That didn't work out very well. Um, I mean, college did. I graduated, but <laughs> it's hard to read anything for fun, um, in college. Uh, The Magician's Trilogy, Daughter of the Forest, which I've read recently. This, oh, this is a sweet story. So... Let's see if I can get this at an angle where you can see it. So my husband and I were high school sweethearts and we'd been kind of dating. We weren't officially boyfriend and girlfriend yet. So we were in ROTC in high school and we had just won this big drill competition and he, we were at a local uh, ice cream shop and we were pretty much done and getting ready to go and he gets out a pen and grabs a napkin and he writes, how would you like to make us official? Passes it to me, I write very much. And he writes, so right now? And I said, yes. And then we were officially boyfriend and girlfriend. So that's that. And my mom framed this for our, this was out at our wedding. Um, here we have a collection of sci-fi and fantasy. Ender's Game, one of my favorites. The Calculating Stars and the Faded Sky are amazing. I read those over the winter, uh, last summer by Mary Robinette Cowell. Red Rising, my husband and I are reading this series. We're on the second book, Golden Sun, right now. Um, here we have the, uh, the companions to a conjuring of light out there, darker shade of magic and a gathering of shadows. And of course, no bookshelf would be complete without the Hobbit, right? Below that, we have some graphic novels. This is a stack that's mostly fables right there. So this next big shelf here is, I have about two and a half shelves of the Great American, the PBS Great American Read books, and these are ranked. And so I have these kind of ugly. Uh, sticky note system here um, with the rankings here. So I have uh, 60 to 65 percent of the top 100 so far. Um, so these are just in order of the rankings from the PBS Great American Read. So the heights are all over the place. Editions are all over the place. And these are a combination of read and unread books. Um, there's a cool owl book in there. And then I have some short story collections and poetry. This is Jen Campbell's The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. I have, there's a, a what is it? The Everyman's Library Pocket edition of uh, uh, Dickinson Poems. And then we have The Convenience Store Woman um, by Sayaka Murata. That's actually a novella. Robert Service Poems there. And then dropping down here, we have basically like thriller and mystery. So I've not read, I think I picked up this Laurie R. King at, um, at a used bookstore for really cheap. I haven't read it yet. What is this one called? This one's called Folly. Then we have The Cuckoo's Calling, the first book in the Corman Strike series. This is the English edition. Silkworm, which is book two I have in the American edition. And then we have The Dry. I, re I finished Forces of Nature book two in the Aaron Falk um, crime series. Um, but it's over here in my, like, red already for the month pile. Um, and then, oh, I love this series. This is the a Alan Bradley's Flavia de Luce's, uh, mystery series. So I have the first two I have in, uh, paperback. I don't have the third one. And I have four and five in these awesome naked hardbacks. So ideally, I would like all of them in the naked hardbacks. But they tend to be kind of expensive, just any versions of these. So I still, in order to continue in the series though, I need book three that's missing. Agatha Christie's here and then Agatha Raisin. The Quiche of Death I read pretty recently and love that. And then um, some audiobooks here. Harry Potter, Steve Martin, Chuck Palahniuk, Dave, David Sedaris. And then this is actually George Carlin comedy concerts from the 70s. And then that's my husband's uh, Purple Heart. And that's Jimmy. He was one of my Cabbage Patch dolls, one of my, one of my treasured possessions. As a youngster, totally random down here. This is the Marine book that almost uh, killed me. 
in an earlier video, and there's some random kind of reference stuff down here in another random Ikea box of stuff. And then I have this shorter of these Billy bookcases, and um, this stack right here are the books that I have completed, the physical books that I have completed for the month kind of yet to be wrapped up. And then um, these, here's a sneak peek here. These would be a recent haul uh, books. That is my adorable niece and nephew and my intelligent goats. And then this is just like random board game stuff. There's a bunch of glasses cases down there. Normally when I film, I actually take uh, Seen It, Risk, and Lord of the Rings Risk. Um, and uh, they sit on my desk right here. And that's where I film. So I sit here and uh, they're stacked up there on the edge of the desk with the tripod sitting up there. And then other than that, this is my fairly tidy office space kind of thing. So those are my bookshelves. They are constantly evolving and changing as I get new books, get rid of books, think of some other way to organize my books. It seemed they seem to always be evolving, but I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Let me know if you have any questions about my system or a lack of system. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what you see. See you around the tubes.